uh, examination of lumps is a very important skill in surgery and before one starts one of course will need to take a history of that lump. We want to know how it started and if there has been any change with time that is, is it in increasing in size. Are there associated symptoms with the lump? Symptoms like pain, like discharge, or even ulceration. And whether the person has other symptoms, that is what we call systemic symptoms, related to other parts of the body. Then you would come to the process of examination itself. Now, this is standard. There are four main procedures in any examination we do in surgery or medicine for that matter. The first is inspection. The next is palpation. And after that comes percussion and then auscultation. We start with inspection of the lump. And here, one is surveying the relationship of that lump to the area in which it stands. In this case, it is a lump in the back of that patient. So we want to see how it relates to the landmarks there. This lump is actually almost in the midline, close to the medial border of the two scapulae. Then we would need to establish its dimensions, that is, its length, its width. Of course, we can have an appreciation of its height also, the extent to which the lump is elevated from this, the, the surface. This gives you the dimensions of the lump. The next is to observe any changes on the surface. It's still looking. Now this could be um, undulations on the surface, could be a smooth surface or there could be changes in the contours of the surface it could be lobulated also whether the skin there is normal normal skin in some parts of the body has got hair in some parts it hasn't if it's an area of the body where there is hair then its absence over the lump is important so changes in the local skin are noted and also whether the blood vessels in the area are showing more than normal. If there is any ulceration, it should also be noted. And if there is any discharge from the lump, it should also be noted. Now we come to feeling the lump. And the best part for feeling a lump is the volar aspect of the fingers. This aspect of the fingers. And it's best if they are together. Two or three fingers, three, four fingers together to feel the lump. And one takes a, a, a feel, as it were, over the surface to determine whether it is smooth or lobulated. Then one can sometimes have a better appreciation if one pushes the lump to one side so you can see whether there are lobulations or not. This doesn't apply to every lump, but this particular lump 
if you push the lamp to one side, you could see the lobulations better. The next is to determine the confines of the lamp. The examiner will have to walk the fingers around the lamp to see if it is well defined or not. Of course, a well defined lamp is likely to be benign. A lamp which is not well defined is more likely to be infiltrating into the surrounding skin or, or tissues, which means that lamp is likely to be malignant. In this particular lamp that we are examining, it is clear that the outline is well defined, so it's very likely to be benign. Now we come to the part of testing for attachment of the lamp. Is a lamp attached to the underlying structures or the overlying skin? You first test for the uh, attachment to the overlying skin. Here in this part, this particular lamp, the skin in that area is rather thick and stiff, so the test becomes a little more difficult. But the way to do it is to test not from the center of the lamp, but go to the periphery and you can lift the skin of the lamp. If that is done, it shows that the lamp is not attached. Regarding the attachment to the underlying structures, in this particular lamp, we expect muscles in that area and the muscle concerned in this particular lamp is the trapezius muscle, whose action is to make you shrug the shoulders, shrug the shoulders. So as you test for movement, you would ask the patient to put that muscle into action by shrugging the shoulders while still moving the lump. And if there is attachment, it will be evident. So there will be a difference from when the muscle is relaxed, that is without the patient shrugging the shoulders, and when it is the muscle is contracted, that is with the patient shrugging the shoulders. And if there is a difference in the mobility, then it means the lamp is attached. If there is no difference, it means the lamp is free. So far we have tested for attachment to the overlying skin, attachment to the underlying lamp, uh, underlying um, muscle. Now, by now you would have an idea whether the lump is soft or firm or hard. These are the three grades of consistency. Any lump that you examine will have a consistency. In between those three, there could be uh, shades between. So it could be very soft, soft, firm, very uh, uh, hard or what we call stony hard. So you can have five when you have studied the lamp more uh, uh, carefully. But usually you can determine at least three degrees of consistency. When a lamp is soft, it could mean that it contains fluid. And one way of ascertaining this is to do the technique of fluctuation. Now, this needs to be very carefully done. One, one puts two fingers on the lamp and these are the watching fingers as they were. In this case, my, my index finger and my thumb. And we have what we call the displacing finger. So you, you really have three fingers minimum to do this. And you will then displace the lamp by pull, uh, pressing slightly in and you see the watching fingers moving apart as you do that. And you do it a couple of times. One, one mistake that we often see, it's quite an error, you see, uh, 
freshers doing it so many times, trying to assure themselves. This is a weakness in technique. You only need to do it two or at most three times. So you press once and you see the watching fingers move and you do it again, that to be sure. And that might be enough. If there's any doubt still in your mind, you do it a third time. That should be maximum. Now, that is fluctuation in one direction. But to be sure that this fluctuation is genuine, you have to do it in a change the direction 90 degrees to the previous direction. So from here, I'm now turning my fingers 90 degrees. And I do the same thing to see my uh, displacing finger and watching fingers move. If it happens that way and the lump is fluctuating in the two directions, then this is genuine fluctuation. And this usually means that lump contains fluid, maybe just uh, serum, or it could be even fat. In this particular case we are examining, it is quite certain that this is fat, which is making that lump fluctuate. Now, we come still in the uh, area of palpation. Any lump has, well, in an area, um, will be drained by lymph nodes. There are areas of drainage of lymph to the lymph nodes. In this particular lump, the areas of drainage from the position of the lump would be to the lower neck lymph nodes, which we call the lower cervical, or to the axillae, the axillae on both sides. Because the lump is in the midline, it's likely to go to both axillae. And of course, there are five groups of lymph nodes in each axilla, but the group most likely to drain this lump is the posterior axillary group. So you would put your hand into the axilla and feel the posterior wall of the axilla. This is the most relevant. Of course, when you have ascertained whether there is a, lump, uh, a lymph node there or not, you can scan the other groups of lymph nodes in the axilla, the anterior the lateral medial uh, uh, groups. At the end of this, um, if in the course of examination you had a feel that this lump may be vascular, that is, it's got a lot more blood vessels, then you would want to listen over it. In this particular case, it is quite clear from my earlier examination findings that this examination is not necessary. And it is important not to do procedures that are not necessary. It wastes time and gives a wrong impression of your understanding of the pathology that you are dealing with. So from the uh, process of looking that inspection, palpation, I have come to the decision that this lump is 
a lipoma, which is a benign tumor of fat tissue, or what you call adipose tissue. And of course, the necessary uh, management of this is just a straightforward excision. There will be no need to send the specimen for histology or histological examination because we know it is a benign tumor.